देंगे
But then I couldn't pay, so I was doing a 50% scholarship because I was doing a class. So $10, etc. And even that was a child. Moving into high school, I became what I coined a closet beggar. So my passion was for school was so great that even though there was no money to go to school, my, school was, my high school was an hour away from my home. I would wake up in the morning, dress up, wear like my uniform and everything, polish my shoes. Well, I didn't really polish my shoes. I had like a piece of cloth and I dumped it in the water and like just sort of shine my shoes. It was fun. <laughs> That's what I did. So I went to the bus stop and I went for a student going to my school. And this person, I told him, him, because it was an all boys school, that, hey, gentlemen, I left my money at home, can you help me out? So he pays my fare and I get to school. A new set of friends, I reimburse this person who paid my fare. And my friends in school would buy me breakfast, would buy me lunch, and sometimes give me money for dinner or going back home, my fare back home. At that point, my principal, the high school had to step in to pay my fees to finish high school. That was not complete. So after high school, that's not like high school. After high school, there was no really any opportunity for me to develop or to go to university. So my so I took a gap year and I worked in the US at Ghana. As I worked there, I received an opp the opportunity to start a fund, which is which is, uh, how do I put this? It's a scholarship fund for students who want to write SATs and get into colleges in the US or Canada. So with this fund, it pays for everything, SAT college. 21 rejections, but I got to Michigan State University and I got the MasterCard Foundation Scholarship Program Award, which is a full ride scholarship to study in the US, in Michigan State University. Plane tickets, food, tuition, accommodation, everything is covered for. So, I came here and I realized that I have, my story is not exactly unique. Well, I said it almost died apart. But, <laughs> my story is not that unique because most people, most students in Africa, in my country particularly, don't have the means or sort of create the same challenges I face with no money to continue education, increasing all these challenges academically and financially. So my friends and I, who also came from the States, started the Young Catalyst Foundation Ghana, where we set up an NGO and support students in a even more isolated region in Ghana, where we support them to write the SATs and whatever exam is needed for them to obtain scholarships in Ghana itself, in residence in Ghana, in the continent of Africa, and around the world. Last year, we had two students write the SAT, one got into Cornell in the elitization program on a free rise scholarship. The second person got into Akron State University on a presidential scholarship, which is also on a free rise scholarship. This year, we received 10,000 US dollars in funding from various institutions and corporations. We received laptops and ACT books for our song program this year, which are going to make it even bigger. As I stand here today, I'm proud of myself. I'm happy. I look at myself and I say, I'm just happy that I'm not, I've not been struck by lightning yet. <laughs> because I don't think even I would have survived that. You know, I had an, a big past and an even bigger future. But I decided not to become another statistic of impoverished people on the continent. I decided to be the change I want to see. I almost died several times. I almost gave up some, several times because of poverty, because of hunger. But I did it. I'm here to tell you today, the way is what you make of it. Never conform and do not give up. Thank you.